Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Phys Ed Summit hosted by SB Chat today. My name is Jessica and I'm your moderator this evening. We want to start off by thanking the Phys Edagogy crew for creating the Phys Ed Summit and helping SB Chat along the way creating this wonderful event. Tonight, we are using a lot of technology during the sessions and sometimes tech can go wrong. So we do want to make sure that you can try to be patient with us, please. Um, and if there is any tech that does go wrong, um, we will be com in communication with you with the live chat feature, which is on the right hand side of your screen on the YouTube page there. And if you notice anything that we are not aware of, if you could also let us know on there, that would be great. You can also use that feature to let us know about questions or comments along the way. And I will be getting those to Charles during the presentation to make sure questions can get answered. Um, if you are using social media tonight, we are asking that you can please use two hashtags, one being hashtag SBChat and then hashtag Visit Summit for all of your posts that you're doing. So, and then tonight we are with Charles Silverman and he is doing his presentation on teaching PE in limited spaces. He is out on the East Coast teaching in Maryland and we are gonna head on over to him now. Hey Charles, you are up. Hello everybody, uh, how are you doing? It's great to virtually see you. My name is Charles, I teach in Maryland, uh, in Montgomery County, which is the 18th largest county in the country. A uh, little bit about me, I've been teaching PE for 15 years. This is my first year in this new county with the gym. So the past 11 years, I was in a county where 15% of elementary schools did not have gyms. And I have never had a gym in my career. My very first teaching experience was at a Catholic school. I had a basement, small basement for a place to teach with a very big load bearing pole in the middle of it. My outside space was a parking lot that was on a slope in between two streets. So if we were outside and we were using balls to do foot skills, the balls would roll into the street. It, if we were doing badminton, the birdies would blow all over the place. We were next to the school, so noise would be an issue sometimes when they were testing. When I finally got into the public schools, I naively thought that public schools would have space. I did not have that. I've taught in hallways. I've taught in classrooms where the kids learn. I've taught in empty classrooms with sinks and closets. I've taught outside on just blacktops. I've taught in spaces outside where there's a lot of dog feces and bullet shells. I've taught next to schools where noise was an issue. I've taught in pretty much every conceivable limited space, including trailers and temporary units. I've taught on a stage. I've taught in a cafeteria, so the reason that I wanted to do this presentation is to help those that might not, might be in limited space and be struggling so that you don't have to go through some of the experiences that I had to go through, which were pretty miserable. With that in mind, we're going to start the presentation. Bear with me as I bring it up. So, and teaching in limited space, my name is Charles. If you have a question along the way, feel free to ask it. Uh, so Charles, right now it is, the screen is just black. We are not seeing the presentation. Uh, okay, let's try some. There you go. Can you see it now? No, I do not. Huh. All right. So you can't you can go from that screen right there if you want all right i'll just go this way so by the end of this uh, presentation my hope is that you will be able to see the constraints that limited space has on students and teachers the ability to see teaching guidelines that will help you teach high quality pe in limited spaces and see some limited space scenarios and identify some strategies to effectively teach in those. Like I said, this presentation, I've created a lot of slides 
I want to focus on quality. This will be available to you uh, through the Google Drive link. If you want to watch a video that I skip later, those will also be available to you. If you have questions, ask them along the way. If they'll derail us too far, my contact information is at the end of the presentation. But please ask questions along the way. So limited space, the way that I define limited space is it's any space that you have to teach in that is not specific for physical education, such as a full open gymnasium with one class or a clean outside space that just one class can teach in. So if you're teaching in an overcrowded space with multiple students, that's not limited space. As I go through these, just think. I would imagine that some of you had to have had to teach in a space such as a classroom that has the chairs and the desk in it. Perhaps you've had to teach in a space that has nothing to do with a classroom or gymnasium or multi-purpose room that is somewhere else in the building. Maybe you've had to take students to a computer lab, for example, because you had nowhere else to go. Perhaps some of you out there have had to be on one blacktop outside. Maybe it rained the night before and the grass is wet, or maybe that's all the space that you had. Perhaps some of you had had to teach on a stage in a cafeteria or in a cafeteria itself, whether it's empty with the lunch tables on the side, with the lunch tables in the middle where you couldn't move them. Perhaps some of you have had to teach in a space where the school building was right next door and any instruction you did could potentially interrupt that, that inside teaching and force you to do something different. Or perhaps you've had to teach in a parking lot or an outside concrete space that was meant for something else. Perhaps you've had to teach in a hallway or perhaps you've had to teach in a gym or a space where you needed to split the space, which is my current situation now. I teach in a space where we pull the curtain, um, or you've taught in an overcrowded space. All of these are examples of limited space. And the frustration for the teacher is pretty obvious. As teachers, it's frustrating because we know that we can't teach the curricular goals and objectives the way we want to in an ideal situation. And that's unfortunate. However, we're professionals. And whatever frustrations we, ha we may have with the outside factors that affect what space we teach in, we can't bring that into the classroom with the students. We have to set that aside and deal with that at a separate time because, as you'll see, the students are severely negative affected, negatively affected already by lack of physical education. And when we put limited space on that, it really turns it into a really tough, tough situation for the students short and long term. So some of the short term effects on students are pretty obvious. They might tend to misbehave and go a little bit more off task. They might tend to be more distracted they're on top of each other. They might not like someone in the classroom and they might try to deal with that issue in the classroom. There could be issues with theft or going into the teacher space. Those are minor issues. And if you're only teaching in limited space once every so often, that's something that is manageable. But when you do it over a period of time, it can really be a problem. So what we already know about our students is that the obesity rate is going up, up, and up. And we're starting to see in our students at younger ages that they're getting diseases that were once meant for people who were getting into their older years, such as type 2 diabetes. We also know that this generation of students is less likely to outlive their parents than previous generations. We know that when our children are overweight or obese, they're going to be facing 
other issues that are going to negatively affect their health bone joint sleep apnea self-esteem among a litany of other issues we know that physical activity in schools has gone down so we know that they're getting less physical activity me in my current situation i only see the students once every 45 minutes a week i've talked to teachers who see their students once 45 minutes every six days we know that that physical activity time is dropping we also know that students aren't necessarily making up for it outside of school whether it's due to lack of space where they live whether it's due to financial issues at home or whether it's due to something else that we're not aware of so our students are already less active we but at the same time we know that our students are going to benefit from physical activity we know it's going to help them with memorizing things and being able to concentrate more in the classroom we know it's going to help them process things and we know it's going to improve test scores which seems to be the gold standard by which everybody measures school success in addition we know that if we give them more physical activity time it's going to help give them higher test scores, especially in math, they're gonna be able to learn quicker. It's gonna enhance the learning that's going on. We know that physically active students are gonna be less absent. And that's just a common sense thing. If the students are getting the activity they need and they're healthy and the immune system is stronger, they're less likely to get sick or to have a negative effect of something they're experiencing because they're overweight at a young age and they're going to be in school more and they're going to want to be in school more because they love PE and they love physical activity time. We also know that we can decrease the rate of being overweight or obese in our youth when they get to adulthood by just adding one extra day a week that they get physical education. And that can even roll over into recess. Some counties and some states are cutting back on recess. Others are increasing it. These are really some really dangerous long-term effects. We also know that if we get them young, when they're at a young age, if we even give them just one extra hour a week, we can bring that number down of overweight youth 10%. Think about that. Millions and millions of children. If we got 10%, that's a large number of children that we can positively affect. At the same time, we know that we need the school administration support. We know that we need to have training and we need to have sustainable PE implementation that is consistent across the board so that the students are experiencing the same thing in school a that they are in school d i share all this with you to really ram the point home that as pe teachers who teach in limited space we can't be complicit we can't just throw our hands up and say oh well I don't have a gym. I'm stuck in a classroom or a cafeteria or a stage. I'm just going to throw in the towel and just do what's best for me. Because the students are already losing this time. They're having these negative effects on their health. When you add the lack of space and the less physical movement they're getting because of that, it only compounds these issues. And we can't be complicit and sit here and say that's okay. It's our charge as physical education teachers and teachers in general to step up and say, no, I'm not going to let this be an excuse. I'm going to make this a high quality experience for my students so that they want to be active when they're older and they get the best of what they can now to meet curricular goals and curricular objectives. With all that said, we're going to transition into 
some limited space guidelines. And again, if you have questions, ask them as we go along. If you want to talk about a specific situation, perhaps we can address that and work that into this as well. So when you're in limited space, one of the very first things that you're going to want to focus on is safety. And safety for me is a twofold thing. First, it's about physical safety. So if I'm entering a classroom where the kids learn, I'm looking at what are some danger areas where they might bump into a corner and hurt themselves. I need to cover that up. What are some off-limit areas that I know that I don't want them to go into, such as the classroom library or behind the teacher's desk? I'm going to mark those as no-go zones. Maybe I put cones down, I put up some tape, I put some chairs in front of it, and I'll let the students know that you can't be back there. The second um, part of safety, and this is important, is the student's emotional safety because when you have students in limited space they're more likely to have accidents bumping into each other and if you have a population where the initial response to something like that is not to stop and problem solve or just the nature of young children is not to stop and problem solve because that they're not developed to that point you're going to get a lot of reactionary behavior and when they're in a small space you're also fo facing some possible bullying through sly comments that you might not be able to hear or you're dealing with a student that might be trying to get into another student's stuff and this can derail your lesson and make students feel unsafe emotionally and not want to participate and we need them to participate because we only have that small window. So you want them safe physically and you want them safe emotionally. When you have those two things together, you have a really powerful situation where you can take your students and help get them to that place that you want them to go based on your curriculum and based on just your passion for physical activity. One of my go-tos for teaching in limited space actually is to go outside as much as possible. And I've talked to a number of teachers from different states who don't have gyms and they have to be outside as much as they can. And that was my situation for, like I said, a long, long time. Being outside gives you most access to the most amount of space that you're going to be able to get the students moving to the highest degree and we would push it we would go out in 30 degrees as long as it was within the school systems okay degree limit we were going out in it along with that i was making sure we were prepared all the students had the coats that they needed the students if they had lotion they could bring it i might keep some lotion and tissues outside if it was a warm day, emphasizing in my letter at the beginning of the year to put sunscreen on, to dress the students appropriately for the weather, communicating that to parents. And you might go as far to have some extra jackets and gloves and scarves laying around for those students that might come to school and just don't have the clothes to be outside for what the weather is. But getting outside and being prepared for it is going to really be a boon to helping you teach better in limited space but we also have to keep time in mind uh, students can only concentrate for two to five minutes for every year that they that they are of age so a two-year-old is only going to be able to concentrate for minimum two minutes maximum five i try to keep it at the low level again when you have students in limited space if you are n not keeping them engaged in the time that they can focus and you're going over that you're going to get off task behavior and then learning and teaching is most likely going to derail at some point and we can't afford that to happen we need to keep them moving it's good standard practice to establish establish clear behavior however 
clear procedures and behavior are different in limited space than it might be if you had a gym. If you had a full gym, you're going to bring them in and you're going to set up a certain routine where you want them to sit, what warm up you want them to do. When you're in a classroom, you need to think about specifics. So for example, if I walk into a classroom to teach, what do I want them to do with the stuff on their desk? Do I want it clear? How do I want the students to show me they're ready? Do I want them with their hands on the desk and their voices off? Do I want them to arrange themselves in a certain manner on a rug nearby? Do I want them to have their coats and jackets in a certain place in case we decide that we can go outside? You need to think about the specific space you're going to be in and develop clear procedures specific to that space so that the students know what they're getting into. Along with that, piggyback off of what the classroom teacher does. For example, if the classroom teacher has a system where they move clips for behavior or they, I see a comment from Francis about sharing outside space with recess. Uh, thank you, Francis. I'll just, I will get to that in a second. So again, if the teacher is doing something that's really, really uh, great, piggyback off it. If they have the classroom set up in a certain way and the students are compacted at, in desks in a certain arrangement, follow that because they're going to already know those routines and procedures. And if it works, just keep going with it. So Francis, sharing outdoor space with recess is a frustration that I've had to deal with. And really, the, one of the things that helped me the most was to cordon off an area that was mine. And the other teachers at recess knew it was mine. And they became very respectful and very mindful that their students were not to come over to my space. I would, for me, it was a grassy area that was off to the side of a blacktop and a specific blacktop. So when the teachers, the younger kids had recess on the playground, which was over on the other side of another blacktop, they knew their students were not leaving that space. When the older kids would come out and they'd want to run around down on the field, they knew not to come into my area. They knew not to come over and talk to me. There were times where students just wanted to run through my space, at that point, I would have followed up with the classroom teacher and had a separate discussion with the, te with, the, with the students themselves when I saw them about respect and the situation and how they would want to be treated in that situation. So it's all about communication with the teachers and the students and kind of marking off your territory uh, because literally on my end, when it showed what my classroom was, it said field one. So the teachers knew that, you know, that was my area. I hope that answers your question. Thank you for asking it. It's, it's something that a lot of us have to work with. Um, getting back to some of the procedures here, some limited space guidelines. So you're going to have to be creative. And creativity means a lot of teachers think that you have to have a lot of equipment. And that's not necessarily the case. For example, if you're doing throwing and catching, you can have balled up paper. For kicking and foot skills, I would use cut up pole noodles and have the students pass them between their between their desks. You kind of just have to think outside of the box. And there's some resources, again, that you can access on the Google Drive and other things I'll share later in the presentation that will help you with that. You also, you want to design active lessons and active meaning we want the kids to have their moderate to vigorous physical activity level between 50 to 80%. So if we're doing that kicking, using the pool noodle pieces, every time they make a pass, five jumping jacks. If we're throwing and catching, every time they make a catch, five jumping jacks. That way there's not just standing around and doing something, but they're constantly moving. And keeping students engaged is different than designing active lessons. 
you can design active lessons that bores a student, but you got to keep the student engaged because again, a student that is not engaged is going to tend to get into some sort of off off task behavior or not be participating to the degree that we want them to. So an engaged student, it might just be a matter of them not understanding directions or not necessarily feeling a part of the group. Whatever it is, you kind of got to get to the bottom of it and ensure that your students are engaged. Uh, it's just some other guidelines that I kind of follow and a couple I, I really want to focus on here. Small groups are great for limited space because it allows students to be really, really active and focus on one small task at a time rather than whole group, which is great for some activities. But for some activities, you get those students that just kind of want to go off in their own direction. When in Rome, as I mentioned before, if if your space you're going into is set up a certain way, for example, a cafeteria that I used had 12 tables. I had it for two class periods in the morning. I wasn't going to put the tables up and take them down. So I found ways to work around the tables. When I went into the classrooms, I generally didn't move the equipment. I didn't move the desks and things around. I would keep it that way and work within those constructs. Using technology is, is something that can be a real lifesaver for being inside. There's a lot of sites that I'll point out later that are great for engaging the students, keeping their MVPA up, making sure that they're active and engaged. And again, you got to be the role model. If you're positive and excited about what you're doing, the students are going to be excited and positive about it. But if you kind of go in there with an attitude of, oh, here we go again, I'm stuck inside. The kids are going to pick up on that, and it's going to be a tougher experience. And we all have those bad days, so have a plan B for when you're having that kind of day where you just you can't deal with this anymore, and you can have an activity that the kids know. You can roll it out and do it. And for me, that usually was uh, fitness bingo, which is on the Google Drive. So with all that in mind, I want to show you a couple different videos of limited space exemplars and sort of draw out how the guidelines are used in that. This Next activity, guys, we're going to play Paper, Rock, Scissors, Olympics. We're going to have three sections. We're going to have the gold division here. Silver and the bronze. You guys will all start off in the bronze. So first let's uh let's all stand up and go by the bronze area. Yeah, put put your chairs in, yes. Daniel, push your desk up a little bit there. Uh can you push that one back? Yep. This one back, uh, or that way. Nope, sorry. Just wanted to try something. My apologies. Division here. Silver and the bronze. You guys will all start off in the bronze. So first, let's uh, let's all stand up and go by the bronze area. Yeah, put put your chairs in. Yes. Daniel, push your desk up a little bit there. Uh, can you push that one back? Yep. This one back. Uh, or that way. And then push that one forward. Guys, so real fast, this is a bronze. 
this open area here in the middle is the silver. And then this open area here is the gold. You have to work your way up to the gold. How do we get over here? Let's say I'm facing, come here, Diego. We're going to paper, rock, scissors. How do we do it? We jump three times, and with your body, you're either going to make a rock, a paper, or scissors. The first three ones, here's, I'm going to go rock, paper, this is scissors, this is rock, this is paper, and this is scissors. One more time, this is rock, this is paper, and this is scissors. On the third jump, you need to form what you're going to make. So if me and Diego are playing here, we're playing. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors. He's a paper. He beats rock. I stay. He's going to move to the silver. Now, anyone that wins is going to move up to the silver. You'll face anyone that steps into that, that area. Let's say we both won. I'm here. Let's play again. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors. What am I? So I cut the paper, I move, I move to the gold area now. I want to see who can stay up here for at least 10, 10 turns. I want to see, I want to see who can win at the gold division 10 straight times. That's what our goal is. Okay, if I, if I lose at the silver, where should I go? The bronze. If I win in silver, I move to gold. I lose in gold, I go to, to silver. If I win in gold, what do I do? You stay, that counts as one. Yes, how few can get to 10? If I lose at bronze, what do you do? You stay. We have any questions? Do we all have a partner you're gonna face in the first round? You don't have a partner, I'll be your partner. Who doesn't have a partner? Ali. Ali Eduardo. Ready? Ready? Go. Whatever, right enough, call me, come get them there with me till four tonight. Night or tomorrow. You guys come here. You guys stay right here. Sit down here. Sit You're right here, just stay there. Okay, that's a good, that's three good. Good. So, to get to some of the other videos I want to show you, this is a really great example. You noticed in the beginning of the video, he was focused on safety by moving some of the desks around. And the students clearly knew what his procedures were. They seemed like they were listening to him. And they were. this was an activity where they were moving. They were actively engaged. You could see that he has some interruptions, but he seemed to deal with that pretty swiftly and in a really nice, understated way. Never had to raise his, raise his voice. And you can imagine that this would be something you could do at the beginning of the year for cooperation and teamwork 
this is something you could do to tie into a health and fitness unit on learning how to take our heart rate or the effects of exercise on our body. I really, really love this activity. And it uses something that I don't know anyone who doesn't love, which is rock, paper, scissors. If people don't know what rock, paper, scissors are, I really question whether they have rock, paper, scissors where they grew up or even went to kindergarten. So here is the next activity exemplar. And this is for a K to two level. Good now we're gonna move to my next game, which is trees and squirrels. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, my trees, how do we make a tree? Stand up here, Jesus. If I put you guys as a partner, okay, you're gonna grab hands like this, and this is the tree. As Soon as I put a squirrel in there, you're gonna close it down, okay? So we're gonna group the three, tree off, three. So if, you're, if I tell you tree, you're gonna get with your partner and keep your hands up like this until I put a squirrel there in the middle. You'll see in a second, okay? So if you two guys make a tree, Get you two guys make a tree. Get you two make a tree. Let's get Medina. Why don't you go inside that tree? Jose, why don't you go inside this tree? Come on, guys. Um, why don't you two guys make a tree? Get you two boys make a tree. Natalie, you come inside this tree. Krista, you go inside there. Janita, why don't you make a tree with Jimari here? He doesn't want to make a tree. You come inside here, Jesus. Let's get uh, you two girls make a tree. You go inside there, Giovanni. Let's get you two girls here make a tree. You go inside. Let's get you two girls make a tree. You go inside. And let's have you two girls make a tree, and you go inside. Good, so now we see, guys, let's make a tree. Now we see every pair of trees has a squirrel in the middle, right? The only one that does not have a squirrel is poor Vanessa. When I say change homes, trees, all you're going to do is lift your hands up, squirrels, you're going to walk, to a different tree, it does not matter. Trees, as soon as you get a new squirrel inside your home, you're gonna close your, your gates down. You understand that? So when I say change homes, trees, get your hands up, let your squirrel get out. We got a new roaming uh, squirrel. So hopefully we find a new home right away so that she doesn't take your home. Remember, we're not running, this is walking. If you don't have a home, just come by me and we'll do it all over again. Ready, change home. Oh, find a tree, come on. There's a tree over there, two trees, two trees still. Look. Janet, you got Leslie. Good, ready, change homes. Let's slide you girls over a little bit so you have space. Good, now Sally's left out. Ready, change homes. Good, Jose. Good. Good. Ready? Change home. I want to stop it with time in mind, but as you can see, he did not have to rearrange any of the furniture. The students were able to do this in the space that they were in. He grouped the students somewhat based on where they were sitting. So he kind of went with when in Rome. The students were enjoying it. They were engaged. They were somewhat active. This again is something you could do at the beginning of the year. And that would tie into cooperation. Or you could perhaps integrate some sort of foot dribbling skill. They have to dribble something as they move from tree to tree. 
I'm hoping in, that there are some middle school and high school teachers out there. The next activity or two I'm going to show you are great, great for teaching in a crowded space in, in the gym or just in general for limited space. So we're going to start with meet in the middle, which is a warm-up game. Um, and you can also include all of your fitness activities in this same warm-up game. Let's get started. All right, guys, we're going to get toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So when I say go, I want you to find a partner as fast as you can. Ready? Go. Toe-to-toe -to -toe with a partner. Toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If you can't find a partner, come meet me in the lost and found. Perfect. You too? And us too. Okay, one of your partners is in number one, one of you is in number two. Decide who's which. What do you want to be? Two. Two? I'll be number one. All the number ones on this side. All the number twos on that side. You need to be standing across from your partner. Standing across, not sitting on the mat. Okay, guys, this activity is called meet in the middle. Meet in the middle. So when I say go, we're going to run to the middle, and we're going to high-five our partner, and then we're going to run back as fast as we can. Ready, go! <laughs> All right, this time, you're gonna meet in the middle, you're gonna high five right, high five left. Ready, go! <laughs> All right, this time, high five right, high five left, right kick, Left kick, turn around. Go! Right, left, right, left, turn around. Okay, now we're gonna add our fitness into this. So, we're gonna high five right, high five left, 10 push ups. Ready? Go! Motivate your partner the whole time. Ready? One, two, three. Good job, good job. Go back. All right. This time, we're going to do our sit ups. And every time we come up, we're going to high five our partner. Ready? Go. One. Anybody warmed up? Anybody warmed up? So a really great activity. Imagine you could have lines at each end that are two to three people deep if you have an overcrowded situation. You could even do this in a limited space when the students aren't going. Have them doing jumping jacks or running in place so they're moving. You can integrate a lot of different things into this. You could have them dribbling a basketball up to the middle, dribbling a soccer ball up to the middle, striking or volleying a ball with a racket up to the middle, a lot of curricular things that you can integrate into this. Another one for the middle school level. Hi, I'm Shanna Green from Dell Valley Middle School, and today we'll be playing a game called Over, Under, Around, and Through. This is a great game for the gym or in a classroom if it's a rainy day. Ready? Ready, guys? On my whistle, I need you to get in that many groups. So this is whistle mixer. When I say go, I need everybody running around the gym. And when you hear my whistle, that's how many people you need to have in your group. Ready? Go. Everybody's running. Running, running, running. Quick, quick, quick. Nice job. Does any have four? Perfect. Two? Okay. Okay, now within your group, you're going to decide who is the closest to the ceiling. You are. Okay, whoever's closest to the ceiling, go get me two scarves for your group. Go. You only have 10 seconds. Go, go, go. Okay, watch very carefully. This game is called Over, Under, Around, and Through. And we're going to be running a pattern. So two of you are going to hold the scarves. Okay, just like this. Get there, Jacob. Elijah, two of you hold the scarves. One person's your runner. 
Okay, we're gonna practice very slow. The runner is gonna go over the two scarves. Go over. Everybody practice over the scarves. Perfect. Okay, now they're gonna go under. Send them under. Now they're gonna go around the two people. Go around us. Great job, all the way around. And through, go through. Nice. Okay, raise your hand if you understand what we're doing. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna put some speed to it. Okay, when I say go, your runner's gonna go as fast as you can, over, under, around, and through. Ready? Go! Over, under, around. Around, 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 and through. Ah! Okay, and you sit down when you're done. Nice. Okay, let's try a different runner this time. So two different people hold the scarves. Got it? Okay, when I say go, and have a seat as soon as you're finished. Ready, go. Over, under, around, and through. Around, 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 around. And through. Nice, that's it. Okay, not bad. Last person, whoever hasn't gotten to go, let's get them the runner. Okay, ready, and go, over, under, around, and through. Ah! <laughs> Great job. Okay, now I want you to get close to another team, and we're going to challenge each other. So you two... This activity I love because it's great for limited space. You can see some of the guidelines. She's clearly got a grasp on her procedures and classroom management. She's using small groups. She's not using a lot of equipment. I can imagine this at the elementary level too, where the students have to learn the terminology over, under, and through. And you can integrate locomotor skills when it's their turn to run around. They can skip, hop. When they go over, they can jump. When they go under, they can crawl. So another great activity. My favorite one is called sit down tag. And it is uh, really, really cool because everyone's active. Everyone's having fun. I've never done this and not had, and had any complaints. Essentially, the students stand up next to their chairs one or two students are taggers. They try to tag a student. The student has to sit down before they get tagged. They can only stay in their chair for five seconds. They cannot be babysat. Once they get up, the students can be tagged again. If they get tagged, they do five jumping jacks. Once you get it going, students are constantly sitting down, standing up, running around, and it's really, really safe because a lot of them are stationary. And you can challenge them by only allowing them to sit in their chair for three seconds, two seconds, one second. Uh, one of my favorites. Some other resources. The book, No Gym, No Problem, uh, is fantastic. It helped me out so much in my first couple of years. Charmaine Sutherland, who... I've met and know in person is was a national teacher of the year or, or she was a teacher of the year. She's written a couple other books. Go noodle. If you don't know what it is, go check it out. The premium is like $10 a month. It's completely worth it. You can do sight word games. You can do all sorts of fun games. That the students really, really love uh, cosmic kids. Yoga is another great one that, takes the students through stories doing yoga and they're all active and you're working on a lot of curricular things the classroom activity cards from go for sports is great they're separated into grade by k to two three to four five to six and they have a ton of activities that you can do in a classroom that are really really fun i love kinetic it's they have fitness challenges where students can play against each other 
they can do scavenger hunts where they have to find something in a certain amount of time and then press a button the alphabet workout is like yoga but there's a little story that goes with it so the students see a yoga card with a picture of the pose and on the back you read the story and then speed stacking is always something that's fun inside and if you can't afford the cups you can make your own scholastics is it does cost a little money you can use donors choose or something else to, to try to fund it pta uh, but it's great because you can do a whole group activity using a big board or individual activities using little boards and they cover a lot of skills the last thing i would recommend is having some sort of checklist for your limited space and i suggest this because i've overwhelmed you with a lot of information i'm sure if you just pick three to five things that you want to focus on for your limited space and you have them in front of you you can start to slowly add to that and it'll become more comfortable and more natural and the one thing that i put on the bottom that's important to me is that you got to have fun so i want to try to do things that not only are the students going to like but i'm going to like because if i'm not having a good time and i'm kind of bored I might start to stare off into the distance and then problems occur. Um, just really nice thing to have. So let's put it all together. We know it's an issue for students and their health. We know that having limited space compounds that. We know there's guidelines we can follow to make it effective. Let's take a look at a couple scenarios. These are personal scenarios from my experience. Let's just focus on the one in the gray for now. Uh, Going to assume that you can read. I can't see you, so I'll sum it up. You basically come to school. It rained at night. The grass is wet. The blacktop's a little wet. Uh, you don't have the indoor space. You start to teach and the cafeteria is being used for an assembly and lunch stop raining so you can go outside but you're confined to one black top out of two that are dry you really don't have yellow lines you only have four basketball nets and you're doing underhand throwing so at this point in the presentation if i could physically see you i would ask you well what would you do and what are some alternatives now feel free to type that in the question box if you want uh, but in this situation, some answers that I've received from other teachers would include things such as using yarn balls because they're a little bit safer, having the students step back for every throw, that, every catch that they make successfully, integrating jumping jacks for every successful catch, doing some sort of bowling activity, stuff that would allow the students to be active allow them to stay safe not much in the way of movement because we don't want them to slip and fall and keep them engaged and active and the situation on the right again it's too cold to go outside you can use the cafeteria for the first couple of classes you got to put the tables up and down trash cans and desks in the middle a piano and you're doing striking with shorthanded implements. So again, some responses I've received for this one were uh, using f paddle and a ball or just a hand and a ball to strike a ball into a bucket for a point. And again, you can associate that with a certain exercise they have to do along with that point. You could do different relays different relays. I see that somebody suggested doing bokey or bocce, sorry, bocce for the first scenario. Uh, thank you, Matt. That's actually a really great idea. And again, if you want to get them moving, you can incorporate every successful hit with some sort of physical activity. So just 
some things to get you to think and grease the wheels about well, what can you do with limited space. One of the best things that my mentor teacher said to me in my first couple of years of teaching was, you can only control two things, what you teach and how you teach it. We can't control why we have limited space. We can't control the politics of why the schools were built the, ways that, the way that they were. We can't control the politics of the testing mandates and how even though everybody knows that physical activity helps improve test scores, we're still losing it. We can't control the way that the teachers behave if we have to be in their classroom or the way that the teachers look at us sometimes perhaps is just planning time. We can't control any of that. And to worry about that stuff is going to derail from the most important thing, which is getting our students active and fit for a healthy lifestyle. So we really need to focus on what it is that we can control. And that is what we teach and how we teach it. And in a limited space, we can use the guidelines and the knowledge that I've now given you in order to make that a possibility. I'm going to try to attempt to switch it back where you can see me although I'm not sure I'll be very successful with that. Um, there we are. So that's teaching PE in limited space. We have about four minutes left. If anyone has a question or suggestion, suggestion or something they'd like to add, feel free. I see that there were some really great comments uh, about the chat. Um, while it was going on and i appreciate that i want to thank you for taking your time out on a school night in the middle of the week to be here with me um, I, this is a subject that i really feel passionate about and i think that it's not going to go away anytime soon from the research that i've done and the things that i've read the school systems are grossly underfunded underfunded as far as how much capital that they have to build new facilities and there's an aging infrastructure that was built for the baby boomers and in times when communities were smaller and we didn't have such a large population. So unfortunately, teaching in limited space isn't going anywhere and the heydays of having PE once a week for 45 minutes are long gone. So we have to adopt and we have to uh, pony up or saddle up and do our jobs and the best we can because at the end of the day It's not about us. It's not about the politics. It's about our students and I'll leave you with the idea that it's your charge to Show that limited space is is not a barrier But it's something that you can take and turn into a, a really really great glass of excellent lemonade out of the lemons that you're given. So that's all I have for you. Thank you for your time. If you get a chance, oh, I didn't show you my contact information. Let me put that back, see if I can put that back up. Mm -hmm. Let's see. If you want to get in touch with me, uh, there's my email address. Uh, my website at the bottom, newphysicaleducator.com, is a place where you can get resources. If you sign up for the e-newsletter, you'll get nine free cue cards. I have four uh, online courses I teach for PE Central, so you can see those too uh, and see if they might be helpful for you. If you email me personally and you want any information or you have any questions, reach out, follow me on Twitter. There's three S's in my email. If you put two, it's going to go to an 80-year-old in Florida, and he's not very happy with me right now because of that. So I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help you any way I can. Reach out. Let me know how I can help. Thank you for your time, and I'll turn it back over to uh, Jessica, a wonderful moderator, to close it out. Awesome. Thanks, Charles. We did get some final comments here talk, um, talking about from Francis saying deal with what you control, what you can control, that that was like the great plan. From Matt saying absolutely thanks for the ideas and mindset we need to have for teaching in limited space. Um, those are kind of two big takeaways we got there. Great.
And for the rest of you guys here, please make sure that if you need your certificate of attendance in the live chat there, I put the link in for you. You could also um, make sure to spread the word because this has been recorded. So if you feel like you would like to see it again um, or share with others, please do so. And on the website of the SB Chat and Phys Ed Summit, uh, Charles's resources are up there along with the presentation for you to have access to later. And in that are all the full videos that he had stopped early in this session. Um, you can see the full videos through his resources. And that is it for us tonight, since I don't see any other questions coming up right now. Thank you, Charles, very much for joining us for our Phys Ed Summit here. My pleasure. And everyone else, thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night.